And this party is underway in Barcelona. And Maurice Hicks from his two. And Hicks is out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. All right, let's give you an idea of who to keep your eye on. These players, of course, allocated by the NFL. For Scotland, we told you about Craig Nall and Ken Simonson. Barcelona has a very good linebacker in Tito Rodriguez and maybe the best corner in this league in Antoine Simmons. And Nall, the number three quarterback in Green Bay last year. The Packers are very pleased with his numbers this year. He's the leading passer in NFL Europe, and he had a fabulous day last Saturday in Amsterdam. And he'll go to the air, and his quick throw is caught. Scott McCready with the catch. And he's bounced out of bounds at the 28-yard line. The rest of this Scottish Claymore offense, a very good offensive line. Keep your eyes on Brandon Moore, the left guard. It's a line that has done a lot of work, especially for the skill guys. Ken Simonton on the far left, Mike Milan, the fullback, Adele Shepard, Scott McCready, and Rodney Trafford is the tight end. It's a West Coast offense. A lot of times it's a two-back look. Right now a one-back look, and you look right at him, Ken Simonton. Play action for Nall, throwing on the run. He's got John Minardi, and he's got the first down. Minardi is out to the 39-yard line. The strength of this Barcelona team is their defense. A 4-3 look up front. Jabari Issa is not allocated, but he has the most NFL time. He played two years with Arizona. The strength of the defense, the linebackers. Two Cincinnati Bengals. We told you about Tito Rodriguez in the middle. Jason Waters and Antoine Simmons on the corners. Lewis and Smith are the safeties. On the draw, Simonton caught from behind and drops. Merceda Perry made the stop for Barcelona. Well, two things we see here very early. And what we want to do, you know that they're going to script the first 12 plays. And you're seeing just go through the progression of scripting this play. But then on Barcelona's side, you're seeing what they're trying to get done early. The first time you see that running game led by Simonton, you've got to get up field and stuff that running game. Ken Mardrum is the offensive coordinator for the Scottish team. And he's got it scripted. And in his script, he has them scoring on the sixth or the seventh play. <laughs> Second down, 10. Simonton on the swing. Simonton breaks loose. Kenny Simonton, the 40. Simonton down to the 38-yard line. And Mercedes Perry, again in pursuit, made the stop. And so far, the script is working. The script is working, but the thing about Simonton, we're talking about stopping the run. That, that's the one thing you have to be careful of when a guy just wants touches. A guy like Simonton just needs to get the ball in his hand. We asked him yesterday, well, you know, you return kicks, you run the ball, you catch the ball. What is it about that? He said, listen, I just want to touch the football. As long as I have, I have it in my hands, I feel I can do things with it. Simonton on the bench right now. Maurice Hicks in the backfield. First and 10. Claymore's on the move at the Barcelona 38. No. Plenty of time. Man wide open. Rashad Kent, the tight end. And Kent's to the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Lost his lid, held the ball. And the Claymores are picking up where they left off last week. What you, what you see with the West Coast offense here, what makes it so difficult to defend against, irrespective of how many people you see running it, it's a multiple set. You're giving people so many different looks, so many different packages that they have to prepare for, and you're running some of the same plays. A lot of times you change up the plays from those sets. So because of that, you're seeing guys running up and down the field and not really understanding what's happened to them this early in the football game. On first and 10, this is Hicks, and he's inside the 10, down to the 7-yard line. Dwayne Levels made the stop for Barcelona, and so far, Ken Marjum's script has got him on the doorstep. Yeah, you're going to see Levels come up here and make a play, but what you're seeing now is that now you're going through your progression, you're going through the script. The next thing that you have to look at is now we're ba our backs are to the wall as a defense. Levels and crew has to step up. This was their bread and butter all season. They're able to get people in the red zone and keep them out of the end zone. On second and three, no in pressure, a shovel pass, Hicks, and Hicks dives. He is in. Touchdown, Claymores. How impressive is that? <laughs> Ken Marjum told us it would take six to seven plays to score on their first possession, and he spoke the truth. Well, I thought he was being highly confident in making that statement in the meeting, but short of form, six, seven plays, boom, they're in the end zone. It just shows, shows you when you're methodical in your game plan, you don't veer from it, good things can happen to you.
And the extra point from Kevin Stemke is good. Well, the home side, the Barcelona Dragons, went three and out on their first possession and punted. We pick it up at the top of the Scottish Claymore's following drive. A four receiver, no quarterback set. It's a direct snap to Hicks, and Hicks is hammered. <laughs> so much for that, Richard Harris. I tell you what, he had what he wanted to, to tell you the truth, because Barcelona didn't really recognize that the quarterback wasn't in, uh, out there. That's when the guy in the other team yells, hey, y'all ain't got no quarterback. <laughs> he thinks it's a screw up. But uh, the thing about Martin is, Still he's going to take some chances, and he's creative, and he's having fun while he's while he's involved in the football game. Barcelona apparently had too many men on the field, and they weren't set. So the trickery... It worked. Where is Ken Marjum? He's in there somewhere. <laughs> I think he is Loch Ness. He's around there someplace. Uh... So it's first and five, so they end up picking up five yards, and it's still first down. Nall still the quarterback. Again with time, and again over the middle. John Minardi, another catch inside the 35 to the 34. That's a 16-yard pickup, and Craig Nall is six of six with a touchdown. And you, that's the first time you're going to hear Tito Rodriguez's name on the tackle, but you're going to see the protection here. Contrast to Barcelona holding up, plenty of time in the back pocket. The ball comes out quick. Bernardi makes a nice grab, and Rodriguez finally makes the tackle. Tito went to Central Florida. The Cincinnati Bengals have his rights. They've allocated him. They mark it at the 35. On first and 10, Simonton. And Ken Simonton to the 31-yard line. Rashad Harris made the stop. Barcelona's defense, the best in NFL Europe. Scottish's offense, the best as well. Barcelona's really on their heels here because, like I said before, with all the different combinations that they're seeing, this is only the second time they've seen two backs in the backfield in an eye. And so they've got to be guessing at this point. Play action, Null. To the sidelines, and it's broken up on a good play. Closing was Jason Waters. The Atlanta Falcon there to make the play. That's actually a nice defensive play by Waters. That ball hung in the air just a little bit too much. Kind of like when you, you know, you whack the ball with a driver instead of a wedge or a wedge instead of a driver. I'm not much of a golfer, but the ball hung up in the air just a tad too much. And Walter was, was able to get over there and get a ball, get a, get a play on the ball. A volunteer from Tennessee. And now an Atlanta Falcon. Third down, movement and flags. Jabari Issa. Encroachment. Number 72. Uh, when you, when you talk in a null, you... Five-yard penalty. Still third down. <laughs> you can see the enthusiasm he plays the game with. Big Brett Favre fan, fan obviously, playing um, behind him up at Green Bay. And just a while ago, you can see him with the hard count pulling Issa off. Typical Brett Favre. Just goes to show you, when you're an understudy, you can pick things up. Third down short. Simonson hit at the line of scrimmage and falls forward to the 23-yard line. Tito Rodriguez got a hand on him, and it's a first down for the Scottish Claymores. Well, you talked about Null in Green Bay. The Packers are very high on him. He was their number three quarterback. Of course, Doug Peterson is the backup to Brett Favre. But the Packers feel that Null, a guy that a lot of people were surprised that Green Bay drafted, can really play in the NFL. A lot of similarities. And um, people would like to believe Brett can play forever, but he, he won't be able to. And hopefully Null can show the kind of things that don't need from him. Null to the end zone. Minority with a catch and the touchdown. The first 12 plays of the Claymore's offense, scripted by Ken Mardrum, two touchdowns. And a 13-0 lead. And that's no fluke because that play, Minardi ran that play against their best player on defense, which is Simmons. And
and an impressive start for Craig Knoll. Kevin Stemke from the Miami Dolphins with the extra point. And so far in Barcelona, it has been all Claymores. Scotland has come to Barcelona, and so far, they've got a 14-0 lead. This season with the West Coast offense designed by Ken Mardrum, the Scottish Claymores have spread it around big time. Ten different Claymore running backs or receivers have scored touchdowns. Nine have touchdown catches. A lot of different weapons, a lot of different ways to score. And it's been a real success, especially in the last two weeks when Ken Simonton and the Claymores have really started to click. Look at this. Five different formations, six different personnel groups on the first 12 plays of the Scottish script. No, standing up. And again, he throws Balls a bullet out. that is caught and dropped and fumbled and picked up. It's still loose. If it's a fumble, the Claymores have it. If it's not, it's an incompletion. I think they're going to call him down here. Whoa. They're running on the field. The pass was incomplete. Wow. Be second down, Scotland. So it is an incompletion. It'll be second down and 10. I don't know. <laughs> Looks like he had that one. Looked like a fumble. So a real break for the Claymores. And that's what happens when things are going your way. They're going your way. Movement. And Mike Milan inside the, to the 22-yard line. Flags down in the backfield back at the 12. Nall is doing a nice job with his hard count. And the ref is make the call right here. Offside, number 53, defense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Second time that that has happened. You referenced Brett Favre in the hard count. And Nall told us yesterday that he has learned an incredible amount with the Green Bay Packers. Watching Favre, the way he runs the team, the way he operates. Yeah, and so what Brett likes to do is get you into a rhythm and break, break that rhythm with his, with his hard count. And Nall is doing a nice job of doing that because Barcelona knows they have to create a new line of scrimmage. They've got to get back there on the run and the pass. Second and five, a little dump off. This one to Stephen Hutchinson. And he's across the 30, out to the 33. That's another first down. I right, draw three, ISO. You heard the call there. I right, draw three, ISO. I right, draw three, ISO. All three, all three, ready. That play comes from Ken Marjoram upstairs to Gene Dahlquist down below. And on first and ten, flags down. Part of snap. False start. Number one, offense. Head bob. Five-yard penalty. Maybe first Brett down. taught him a little too well. <laughs> That's one of those calls that came from the sideline. What happens is when you get the defensive line a couple times, then... Your coach starts screaming at the ref. The ref starts watching him a little bit. Then you get a little makeup call. Here we go. Queen left. 22. C. Reed Willie. Hold on. Hold on. Guys. Can you translate that one? No. I just know the formation is Queen. <laughs> That's a tremendous catch in traffic by Rob Trafford. Trafford, a New England Patriot, who was a walk-on quarterback in college when he stepped on the South Carolina campus, trying to make it as a tight end. Well, well this offense prides itself, and, and it's just 
getting people in the right position. It doesn't make a difference who's playing the position. They expect that kind of productivity, as you mentioned, out of those positions, and, and they've been getting it. Second down and eight, Simonson on the carry. And he's across the 40, out to the 43, very close to the first down. Now, the West Coast offense, sometimes you, you take what they give you, and the Claymores lately have been having a lot of success on the draw play. And Ken Margem said it's not by design. It's right. just by a, as a result of what the defenses give us. But as a characteristic of a, as a, of a football team, you'll find a team, a draw team or a screen team. But Margem is saying, listen, I strip my plays, and if for whatever chance they don't stop those plays, I'm just going to keep running. If they haven't stopped the draws, just continue to run them. Part of the snap, false start, number 69, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Walt Anderson getting a lot of face time here. <laughs> Way too much. Anytime you keep the refs out of the game, that's the kind of game I like to watch. But the draw, let's go back to the draw for a second. The reason why it's so successful here in NFL Europe is the cause of the cover two that a lot of teams play. In cover two, the linebacker has to get way out of there to be the man in the deep third. When he does that, the draw is wide open. Third down six. Here comes a blitz. Nall's throw in traffic is incomplete. Flags go down. Scott McCready was the intended receiver. And Nall was hit. Was he hit late? I guess that's the question. I think they're going to get levels for this hit. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 57, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And the Bengals, Dwayne Levels, the guilty party. You're going to see levels coming. You can't really blitz. And it, oh, I don't know about that now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm all, and I've been a big, they've complained about me a lot about what I say about quarterbacks, but on that one, if you're going to call those, then you got to put a skirt on them. Spoken like a true defensive line. I mean, nothing wrong with skirts, especially if you're in Scotland. But Yeah, you better be careful there. <laughs> there are a few Claymores that, that might take a se exception to that. Into Barcelona territory. And the draw to Simonson. In traffic, the little man picks his way inside the 45. A gain of another four yards. And the final play of what was an impressive first quarter for the Scottish Claymores. Craig Knoll, Ken Simonton, John Minardi on a roll right now. Scotland has a 14-0 lead. The World Bowl in Scotland in two weeks. And you're talking about two teams that are picking up where they left off the week before. Scotland's doing an excellent job on offense. Defensively, the Dragons, they seem to be on their heels a little bit. Knoll on a swing pass, Simonton. Nice move. Simonton to the 30. Simonton to the 20, and he's out of bounds. At the 14-yard line, Marcus Smith caught him, and this is what has the Scottish Claymores coaching staff so excited about Ken Simonton's season. And you talk about them being excited. The Bills should be very excited about this young player also. I, let me tell you something. I don't know who said this kid can't run. You don't have to run when you're quick. You know, some guys in this league are lightning fast. Others guys are lightning quick. This guy happens to be one of those lightning quick guys that can make things happen. And when you have a guy like that on third down, that's where a guy like this fits in. It's kind of guy like when they said Priest Holmes was on to be this guy turned to be an everyday player 32 yards on the catch no again end zone and he overthrew Shepard flags down and whistles stop things as the ball was in the air there was no play delay of game offense five yard penalty still first down The disparity of yards is pretty alarming right now. Scotland with 168, and Barcelona just can't do anything right offensively right now. Yeah, there's some stats that are ugly, and there's some stats that are ugly. This is one of those doggone ugly stats, because Barcelona, you should know, is not a front-running team. If, if, if they get behind too much further than the two touchdowns that they are right now, that's not a good situation for them. First and 15, no. Short throw, caught, Milan, and Mike Milan is out of bounds at the three-yard line. James Lewis with the stop. 
Now you mentioned that when we uh, at the opening of the show, you said Barcelona was five and three. And we'll just talk over the three play, but at, at five and three, you'd figure that they'd be playing with a lot more confidence than they were. And I we said it earlier, it just did not seem like a very con like a very confident football team. What happens is when you're winning games, and you're not dominating them, you're just winning games, and then you get a blowout like you did last week, it shakes your confidence. This is Hicks. My goodness. And Hicks is in touchdown. Flags are down. Well, Scotland is is confident and they're winning yeah. games right yeah. now, Sean. They've won two in a row going into this one to even their record at four and four. Twelve men. The defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. That is the second time that has happened yeah. in this game to Barcelona. But you're hitting it, you know, when as a player, even if you win games, you go back and you question yourself, did we play well enough to win this game? And after a while, if you're winning games and you don't really think that you're dominating, when you get into a game where you lose a football game the way they did last week, your confidence is shaken, and now you're questioning yourself. And that's what Bar Barcelona's doing right now. They're questioning their ability to play this game. Rob Hart adds the point. Second touchdown for Maurice Hicks of the Chicago Bears. It has been all Scotland so far. And the defense now will be called upon after a big play by the special team. Shane Stafford takes over for Craig Knoll by design. Stafford at quarterback and Simonton across the five out to the seven. That's, that's a big hit by Tito Rodriguez. And when you get a team back to the wall, that means the offense, their backs are to their goal line. This is a time you have to talk a thing called sudden change. That means you're going to make positive plays, just like Rodriguez made this a while ago, to get this ball back to your offense. This could be a positive situation for Barcelona if they can stop them in three downs right here. Second and seven. Stafford, property of the New England Patriots. It's a Buffalo Bill and Ken Simonton, and he's out to the 15-yard line, very close to the first down. Rodriguez again with the stop. Stafford has kind of worked his way through arena football into the NFL. The Patriots have sent him here to NFL Europe. He had a death in the family last week and missed the week of practice and did not play last week. And Noah played the entire way. But as Gene Dahlquist told us, Stafford would probably get the start of the second quarter and they'd see how it went. Yeah. Like we we're talking about the contrast. They're not going to do a lot of subbing with their quarterbacks. If a quarterback is hot, it's really hard for them to yank him out of there. But trying to get Stafford some playing time, and you got to love the guy. He's a uh, Connecticut Husky. He used to play against us, Northeastern. You know, kind of like a little rivalry. Going you're on a Northeastern guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for seeing my Division One AA guys get a shot. Now, once again, Barcelona has to do a better job of knocking team out. You had them back to the ball. You had to go four, three downs to get them out. Now, you can ill afford right here to make this a 12-play drive. You've got to knock them out in this, in this series of downs. A dominant offensive performance so far from Scotland. And this is Simonton. Bounces outside, and Simonton to the 30-yard line. Ken Simonton was a high school All-American in Pittsburgh, California, and only one school gave him a scholarship, believe it or not, and it was Oregon State and Mike Riley. Yeah, but we're talking about all this play right that's going on right here. The problem is that there's nobody going this way, and because of that, it's creating so much problems for Barcelona. A new line of scrimmage is not being created. First contact win. The first contact is coming from the offense of Scotland Claymore. On first and ten, Stafford on the throw. Rashad Kent to the 34-yard line. 21-0. Scotland on top. Here in the second quarter in Barcelona. That's not good. <laughs> you know, they go up almost a half of football. Uh, we're talking about the first 12 plays. We know they ran 12, and now we're probably into the next. Uh, they probably run 20 some plays already. That's not good, and you're not going to finish the first half. Picking up right where the left last last week being on the field way too much 
Barcelona's defense. Maurice Hicks on a swing pass. Rodriguez got a hand on him, and that stopped a big play from becoming even bigger. This is a, an impressive offensive performance so far yeah. from the Claymores. Yeah, this is one of the things that they want to get at. They want to come up right off the edges here. That's what they're calling the edges. And they're trying to get people to the corner quickly. That means they're trying to turn everything back into the inside of the defense and creating holes on the outside for their offensive run. Doing a very good job of executing their game plan, which included attacking the edges of Barcelona's defense. Number 72, defense. Five yard penalty still, first down. Boy, Barcelona has, has broken down at every level in this game. You know, what happens is, I, I don't know if it was Lombardi or someone that says fatigue makes coward of, uh, of us all. What happens is, as a defense, when you're on the field this long, you are just, your tongue is hanging on the ground and you're not playing good football. And, and because of that, you make mistakes, simple mistakes that you wouldn't make normally. Hicks. And Maurice Hicks is loose. Inside the 40, Hicks to the 35, dances to the 33. This combination of Simonton and Hicks is not something you find often in this league. Two top flight running backs in this league well, who both have put up big numbers. Yeah, and then you see the draw once again, and you've got to know that it's coming. You know, it's not, they're not even faking it anymore. They're not even giving you much of a pass read anymore. They're just going there and running a delayed draw and taking the right to you. And because, because you're not coming off a block, you're tired, you're not coming off of the block, this play is very successful. Stafford. On the mark. And a nice catch and run by Anthony Bright, the Houston Texan wide receiver. Bright is here. Just going to run a simple, it's a simple enough route, but the thing what I'm saying is that this is just a simple enough play where Simmons has to close. If he doesn't close, that play is up open all day long. Once again, I hate to, hate to keep saying the same thing over and over again. This is a tired defense. They've been on the field way too long. Simonson inside the 10, and he's down to the seven-yard line. You combine the numbers from Simonton and Maurice Hicks. Simonton, the leading rusher in this conference. Hicks is in the top five as well. You're over a thousand yards there. 1,100 yards combined between Simonson and Hicks. You see, normally when you have two backs in the backfield, you can key on the fullback and say, okay, the fullback is going to take us to every play. But when the fullback keeps you honest by running the ball, it's a totally different ball game. You have to respect his ability to carry the football. Second down and short. Stafford and that one is incomplete. He was looking for Scott Cooper, and there's a flag down, a late flag. Jason Waters with the coverage. Now, Cooper wanted to catch that ball. That would have been what, number 100, right? That would have been. But it wasn't. No. <laughs> Scott Back Cooper. Number 23, defense. Forward place at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Scott Cooper, the intended receiver, the national receiver out of Scotland. And Waters with the interference. This is a very hard play to call, but normally if you just if he had just kept his right hand off the receiver, then it's a harder call for the referee to make. When you get both hands on him, they're gonna make that call every time. On the interference, first and goal. And they mark it right at the five-yard line. Stafford's throw is incomplete. In the corner, he was looking for Anthony Bright. And it seems like Barcelona has, at least has taken a deep breath and said, hey, let's go back to who we are, which is a team that bends, but we don't break. And here we are there in the red zone, and we keep people out of the red zone. So let's try to do what we've been doing all year that's been keeping us successful because you can blame the Scotland offense just so much. At some point, defensively, your job is to keep them out of the end zone and get them off the football field. They haven't been doing that either. Second and goal from the five. Stafford flushed out. Into the end zone, caught, touchdown, there it is. The 100th catch for Scott Cooper. 
and fittingly, it's a touchdown catch. <laughs> this is what they tell you as a defensive player, and I don't want to rain on Scott Cooper's uh, parade, but when you're playing zone or man in the red zone, you have to play zone or man. If you're in zone, you have to play your zone of the football field. If you're playing man, you've got to stay on your man. You can't peek. Some Claymore fans obviously having a good time in Barcelona so far. As are the rest of the Claymores. Rob Hart adds the point. An impressive drive from backup quarterback Shane Stafford. And it ends with a historic touchdown catch by Scott Cooper. Stafford will scramble and slide inside the 30 for a first down. Clock continues to roll. Everything seems to be going right for Scotland. Now they're in their two-minute offense. And Stafford will ground the ball, stop the clock, second down at 10, 30 seconds left, first half. Yeah, Scotland prides himself on, like we said earlier, doesn't really make a difference who's in the offense. We're going to execute our game plan, and doesn't really make a difference who gets the balls. The balls are going to be thrown to positions. And if you're in that position, you're going to get the ball in that play. Second and ten play action. Man open, caught, minority touchdown. <laughs> There goes that man again. <laughs> John Minardi of the Houston Texans, his second touchdown catch of the ball game. Stafford with his second touchdown throw. And they got what they wanted on, the, on that play. They got too deep, but you had uh, the national player in this, Samir Hamoudi, that played over just a little bit too much. It took him too long to get back over to help out on that deep end. And he's just going to take it down as far as he can and then come over deep. Now, normally, here's your safety coming way too late for help. Way too late for help. The throw comes in, your safety comes over way too late. That safety should be in there knocking the snot out of his face, but he's there, there, way too late to get a touchdown. Once again, game plan. Everybody knows the national players are. And, uh, so Scotland just made a point to try to exploit them on that situation. Impressed with Shane Stafford. And Craig Knoll, who started and, and played the entire game last week. Stafford and Knoll have combined for those 328 total yards and FC Barcelona has a grand total of nine. We've got a quarterback controversy. No. <laughs> the way Nall played last week and the way Nall played this week I don't think so. But Gene Dahlquist likes and wants to get both of those quarterbacks right. time. And, and the purpose of this league is to evaluate players and so you'd like to get your guys out there so you can see how they're going to be ready for camp when they get back to the stage. Gabe Cretion on the short kick with a flag down returns it to the 38 yard line. Turn team number 51, 10-yard penalty, first down. Sean, can you think of anything that's gone right for Barcelona in the first half? The weather. <laughs> the weather. No, this, this, this can't be what you expected uh, from a team that's right there in the hunt, uh, playing a home game, two games left in the season, all of things going in their favor. And then uh, to have a game like this, it's a punctuation in, uh, in terms of um, what you were probably feeling. You know, sometimes you're a great team and you don't play very well, and sometimes you're, you're lucky and you're not very good. Well, this team had been very, very lucky early in the season, and that, you know, showing right now they're not as good as probably the record had shown. Unfortunately, you can't tell a straight weather. That one is batted back to McCann, who makes the catch. He can't throw it again, and he's out to the 25-yard line. That was a positive play. That went good. 
<laughs> he lost three yards. But it was a positive he caught it. It was a positive three yards, though. <laughs> and that's how bad it was in the first half when we're searching for positives on a play like that. An unhappy crowd here in Barcelona. And they probably should be. The Scottish Claymores and Craig Knoll with a very impressive first half. 35-0 Claymores. And Barcelona, Zeke Parker will take a knee. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. We saw three different quarterbacks for Barcelona. Right, Ray, Ray, quick out. Right, Ray, quick out. And Seth Burford was the first of them, and they all struggled. They, they, all, they all struggled, and you hear the first call here. It's a quick. It's a quick out. That means, like I said earlier, let's get our confidence back. Let's have a positive play. Let's start the game off with something positive, something to build off. Kyle McCann, and, Kyle McCann and Chris Finland also played in that first half. Burford, there's the you quick gotta out. you got to cut that guy. And it's batted down. Devontae Peterson had the hands up. Yeah, you, you call a quick for a very good reason. That these guys right here, they've got to go down. They, the guys right there, they have to go down. Your offensive line has got to cut those. Out. Not a very good job. Try to cut them, but you've got to cut and roll. He didn't get them down, and the ball's batted. On second down, Damian Hunter. That's the 22 yard line. This is a Dragon team that was at 5 and 3. They were 5 and 2 going into last week's home game. Left Lee, wide cross. Left Lee, wide cross. Full back stay. Hey, we know what we're going to get. We're probably going to cover two. Left Lee, wide cross. Full back stay. On one, on one. An average of only 241 yards per game. They have done it with special teams and defense this year. Well, the Titans don't come across on the top of your screen. Hopefully, they'll get some kind of cover, too, which and is what they have. got one. There you go. Sean Morey with the catch. And Morey out to the 49-yard line. Robbie Robinson made the hit. And these fans have been waiting to... Well, actually, they haven't been waiting to make noise. They've been making noise all day, but they've been waiting to cheer something positive, and they get it. What you're hoping for in cover two has you see the tight end is coming across the linebacker has to stay with him Which opens up the hole right there and you make a catch now, That's execution. That's what you've been waiting for all game for us to execute our office. It's pretty simple They give you cover two. There's certain things you can do with it now. They recognize okay They're not gonna play the one that we thought they were gonna play. They're gonna be in some two. First and ten play action Burford with time running out of it and he's hit and drops Raydell Lockhart with his third sack of the ball game, his sixth of the season. And that's a coverage sack, but in talking to Burford, he said, you know, there are times during the season that I just let the place break down in front of me, and I did not tuck the ball away and run quick enough. This is one of these plays where sometimes he would run the ball with the ball too quickly. This is one of those plays where it's not there. Tuck it away and just get as much positive yards as you possibly can. Second down long. Burford's throw right on the money on the numbers of Kerwin Cook at midfield. He's into Claymore territory at the 49-yard line. Now Burford seems to have it going just a little bit now. This is the same pass early in the game that he skipped, okay? This time, the ball is out quickly. It's there on the receiver, and that's what you need to do. Early in the, in the game, he's skipping balls on 10 yard out 15 yard out the ball is hitting at 11 and 12 yards on the ground before he even gets to the receiver it seems like he's warmed up now still third down and six blitz is coming burford with time dumps it off and it's caught by maury who's got another first down to the 35 yard line and the dragons who could do no right in the first half have come out here and that play will be erased on a hold hey, you know what but i'll take that you know, it's still a positive play. You have to say, hey, listen, we don't hold that play. It's a positive play for us. Holding, number 64, offense. 10-yard penalty, still third down. San Francisco 49er Milford Stevenson on the hold. There you go, right. 
Circle. Right guard right, right here is going to come in. It's just a matter of just trying to get out and then get back in. When he redirects, he just pile drives him to the ground. Now, in the NFL, for 13 years, they never called that. Uh, you know, I never got that call. Never? He's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here, here. Left lead Jets. Fullback stay. I'm one, I'm one. Third down and a bunch. The left lead Jets, fullback stay. So the fullback will stay in to help, which he has to stay in there because the coverage, uh, the, and that didn't help. No, it didn't. <laughs> he stayed in, and it did not help. <laughs> As they peel Seth Burford off the uh, Barcelona grass. Well, what started out positive uh, ended up the way the game has been going for Barcelona. Burford being on the ground. But your linebacker, your, your your fullback is staying in and should be helping on the side someplace. He steps up in the middle. Your most dangerous man is in the middle, but he's not getting through. So he should chip on the outside. He doesn't do that. But... Chance to watch Ken Simonton again, and Simonton skips out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Flags come down right at midfield. Yeah, the flag's coming on the return. You didn't know that was in the job description, did you? And this will go against the Claymores. Illegal block, number 92, Scotland. During the run back, penalty will be <laughs> assessed 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. Nate Bowling didn't like hearing his number that time. <laughs> he said, not me. It is 35-0. And the Claymores get the ball when we get back. 38. Shepard with the catch right at the 41. Obviously, you look at a guy like Nall who is a number three. And people say, yeah, you know, he's a number three. Maybe he can stick in the lead. But Bevel said this. We don't draft a quarterback like him to be a number three right. or a number two. And that's why they sent him over to NFL Europe. Well, Green Bay as an organization has done a very good job, if it's not Brooks, if it's not Burnell, of cultivating young quarterbacks that can play in this league. And Nall seems to be the, you know, the next one in that line. But what I like about him is his confidence and his skill general, general manship. General manship. Very nice. <laughs> you, know. you did it. <laughs> and... More importantly, probably more than anything else, is the fact that he gets it. He understands what his role is, and he said he came over here hopefully to help the game slow down. And he knows that, say, listen, even though it's slowing down here in NFL Europe, when I get back over there, it's going to be quicker, and I've got to make the next level of making that game slow down. And that's what the Packers wanted. They wanted to see him play with speed. Right. And he's done that, especially in the last two he's weeks. Done. He's taken a big leap. Three, two, Three, two on first and ten, Simonson to the 46-yard line. You can add Matt Hasselbeck to that list of Packer yeah, quarterbacks. Exactly right. That the Packers developed in that West Coast offense and has gone on to start in the NFL. Simonson on the carry. Null story, and, and no one, nobody had really heard of him. He went to LSU, and he was behind Rohan Davey right. and Josh Booty. He had his right hand broken by a kicker when he was holding for kicks, and he didn't play in his four years. There's Simonson with a nice move, and Kenny is out at the 35-yard line. Nall, of course, went to Northwest Louisiana State, 1AA, played one year, and the Packers nabbed him in the fifth round after that one year, and that sent a lot of writers and broadcasters to their books to find out just who this guy was. Now, you have to like what you're seeing from this team, including Null, obviously. But we said it earlier, when you're going or progressing towards a championship, you want to be playing your best football. You want to be peaking at the right time. Scotland has made it a point to continue from where they left off last week and keep hitting and keep driving. And you see the mentality of this team right now. Instead of just sitting back and just, you know, pound the ball, they're coming with the same game plan as they had early in the football game. Sean, they need some help to get to the right. World Bowl. They need to win this game. And then next week, they need to win as well. They've got Amsterdam at home as Simonton is closing in on 100 yards receiving and right at 55 yards rushing. But you know what? you got to help yourself. You know, 
you go out there, you win football games, and then whatever happens, happens. But you can't sit around waiting for someone else to get it done. And, and Scotland, at least, they're taking that into consideration in winning football games that they feel that they have to win. Null's throw is right there. Shepard made the catch. And it's first down and goal for Scotland. That's not an easy throw. Not an easy, easy throw at all. And he's making all the right throws. You're going to see Shepard on the outside. What Shepard does is just takes it going. This is just a straight jet. Comes in and then break a post corner. Comes back out to the corner. He fools him in the same step. That's the same move that they got him earlier on. Okay? So they're coming back to the same thing. Same kind of thing that we said earlier. If they have a play early in the, in the first half of the game, all they're going to do is run the same place over and over and over again. They may get there different ways, but the, you're going to see the same plays from this offense over and over again. Kevin Durante got a late hit on Null. First and goal. Claymore's with it. The Packers waited to the very last day before they sent Null to NFL Europe. They said they couldn't decide whether they wanted him in minicamp. And finally, they decided we want to see him play the game at speed and see him play a full season. Simonton to the two. Well, you know, in the NFL, there's certain positions that you have to get better at by playing. You know, you may say, well, that's kind of silly. I mean, every position should be that way. But no, let me tell you, offensive line, you have to play to get better. Defensive line, you have to play to get better. There's so many wide receivers that are on the street that can probably play in the league. So many running backs that can probably play. And probably the most important position is quarterback. You have to see things at a certain speed in order to get better at those positions. Simon 10 is in. Touchdown. So Ken Simonson takes it in. Another long scoring drive. And Scotland adds to what has already been a very impressive evening here in Barcelona. That's when if you're on the sideline, you can hear the murmur of, help me, help me. And that's kind of one of those games. I was in one of these games when I played with the Raiders. And uh, actually... Uh, I had left the Raiders and I was playing in Houston. We got killed, and Howie Long calls up in a panic. I said, "What? What happened? Why have you been calling all over the place looking for me?" He's like, "Listen, if you've been getting your butt kicked like that, I want to make sure that you weren't dead or in a hospital or something." <laughs> Forty-two nothing, Scotland. <laughs> Despite getting hammered right now, Mini Estadi is still very much a festival in NFL Europe. The Barcelona fans continue to have fun even though the Dragons are down big. That is not a luxury box here at Mini Estadi, <laughs> though it's close. This stadium in the shadows of Camp Nou, the storied home of the FC Barcelona soccer team in the sports complex here in Barcelona. This is Sean Morey. Out to the 29-yard line. And Barcelona will put it in play. That little guy has been a great player the last three years in this league. Versatile guy out of Brown University. Spent 99 with the Patriots in New England. The Eagles have signed him and sent him here back to NFL Europe. Yeah, more. He's, he's played just about yeah. everywhere. <laughs> Corner, wide receiver, slot, inside, outside. You know, had a, a great career in college. Broke or held a lot of collegiate records. But the competition at Brown obviously is not what uh, those pundits in the NFL would say is, a, is the best. But this guy has heart. And one of those guys that we're talking about before that, you know, plays with a lot of heart. And you can't measure heart. Now, what happens in a game like this when you're getting blown out like this, this is when they watch a the tape. We want to see who's going to quit on us. Robert Flickinger made the stop. There's another national player and a familiar name in NFL Europe. Maury's got some company over here in Barcelona. <laughs> yeah, he's and you talking about him being tough. His wife is kind of tough, too. I guess he's a, she's a well, hockey you, player, you better, defenseman. You better Defense qualify person. that. You, you better qualify <laughs> yeah, you, that. Yeah, I'll let you run with it. This is already called a defenseman. Second down <laughs> and 12. And... Damian Hunter on the catch out to the 32-yard line. But Maury's wife is a hockey player. She uh, is. She's a professional hockey player with Canada. Yeah, the Montreal Montreal Wing, Wing Stars. Stars. It's Kara Gardner, and that's his uh, fiance. 
Maury. She's actually pregnant with their first child, and mm -hmm. she actually she played a couple games two months pregnant. That's tough. That was a nice qualification. <laughs> Hunter across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Damian Hunter out of the Baltimore Ravens system. You know, in this situation, you have to still find, if you're Barcelona, I should say, you have to find ways to get positive plays, get back to fundamentals, no matter what, because you're being evaluated every single play. The score dictates wins and losses. Your play on the field dictates if you have a career in the NFL or not. So you have to stay with your game plan and at least try to start executing one way or another. Juggled it and dropped it. Incomplete. Kerwin Cook. Sean Morey, we we're talking about uh, Kara Gardner, the hockey player. And she's on the right. Big Kara right there. There you go. Good circling. You can still call her a defenseman. That defense person. How about a blue liner? That, uh, <laughs> that works as well. To the 46. And it will be third down in about four. Five and a half minutes left. Third quarter. If you've just joined us, Scotland just dominated the first half of play. I could just see him in the return reward. No Epiduro. I want to do this natural. <laughs> tough, tough girl. Third down four. Maury in motion. And the lob. Cook makes Good a catch. At the 30. That's a great catch. That's a big time catch. Jermaine Chapman on the coverage. It's Chapman here. We're back up and running. That's just a go. He's just going to beat him. Then what he's, what he's going to do is go up deepest point, highest point, catches the ball at the highest point. That's how you're taught. Both feet down, tap, tap. Positive play. For the New Orleans Saints, Kerwin Cook. This is the first charge timeout. Barcelona. Barcelona takes a timeout. And guess what? The Dragons are on the move. So don't go anywhere. Let's see if Barcelona can stick it in the end zone. Burford has led him down the field. And Matt Sircone can't handle the pass. You, know, you gotta just snap out of it, get back into the huddle, run a play, get positive plays, get on, get on the board, get something going where your guys can at least hang their hat on. And uh, you, know, you don't want to keep like staying in cliche city, but the game's not over. No, and the season's not over too, because a loss puts Barcelona at right. five and four, and Scotland would be five and four as well, and both teams would still be in the running. For that World Bowl, Burford dumps it off. This one caught by Damian Hunter. And he's inside the 20, close to the first down. We showed you before the ball game, there's 64 different scenarios going into this weekend with two weeks left, including this one, and four teams near the top of the standings. For Barcelona, you can check off the top one. That's not going to happen. Maybe. One win in help. <laughs> They actually could have used some help here today as Hunter carries it to the 19. Isaac Keyes made the stop. As third and third and short, they go with the running game, and it looks like Scotland may have held, but you still, you know, what are you going to do? Punt? You got to go for it, obviously. <laughs> when they walked out of the locker room, it was four down territory. All right. 35-0 halftime lead. Burford is a big quarterback, but instead of the sneak, they give it to Hunter. And we'll see. It looks like he has enough. And he does. So the drive continues. Shutouts are not common in this league. Scotland had one two weeks ago. 
Barcelona's last last time they were shut out themselves last year in week seven. Now Scotland's doing a smart thing here. Always if it's close, always call for a measurement. That's one of those, you know, front foot, back foot type of things. And I've seen so many people just, you know, it's like in golf, they say it's a gimme. There are no gimmies here. Make a measure. Let's see if we got it or not. Well, the official said first down all the way. And they were right, but now Scotland is happy that at least they they measured. Come on, man. More importantly than that, you get a timeout, you get a, you get a blow. You get a chance to get a little area in your lungs. That's, a, that's what we call a strategic timeout. So it's first and ten. Tyree Foreman on the pitch, gonna throw it. Foreman into the end zone, deflected, caught. Out of bounds, incomplete. Bobby Jackson, the Green Bay Packers safety, came down with it. I tell you what, when it's not going your way, it's not going your way. It's, it's actually a pretty, pretty nicely designed play, but there's just not enough mustard. And it didn't fool anyone on Scotland though. They were back there playing the, the whole time, playing zone. The guy's double covered. A chance, the play had no chance of succeeding in terms of getting the ball downfield. That is a run-pass option. If the pass is not there, run the football. This would be a pass. Actually, this would be a sack. Again, Michael Landry with his first one. And Landry's a guy that they're really, really high on. And you're going to see the pressure come here. Nice coverage downfield, though. Causing Burford to hold the ball, and Landry just puts the finishing touches on him getting him to the ground. But, you know, we've been talking about Barcelona's defense being the one that bends, but they don't break. And what's been happening, <laughs> at least in this game, is Scotland's been the team that has given them some wrinkles here and there, but they're not letting them in the end zone. Six sacks on the day. Burford's throw deflected and incomplete. That was a third down and long, which will turn into fourth down and long. Darnell Robinson on the coverage. So on fourth down and long, Burford. Has it knocked loose, and it's recovered. Akeel Smith fell on the ball. And that's Robert Flickinger that got his hands on the ball. And Robert Flickinger, the national player, with the play. And so it goes for Barcelona. On Scotland's next drive, they couldn't get into the end zone, and Rob Hart connected from 35 yards out to make it 45 nothing. Barcelona then turned the ball over on down. So we'll pick it up on Scotland's following possession. The Scottish Claymore fans that have come over have really enjoyed this evening here in Barcelona. Look, look at that guy's helmet on the right. <laughs> What's in there? And the Barcelona fans continue to celebrate. What? I'm not quite sure. Just the fact that it's a great day in Barcelona. Sean, I think you are right. The only thing that has gone right for Barcelona today the weather. Well, let's see if we can get something happening here to get a point, just one point on the board for Barcelona and, and the shutout. Maurice Hicks on the carry. Here's the game summary. How do you summarize a 45-0 whitewashing on the road? Eight sacks. Look at the total yardage. Simonson is close to 200 total yards. And we, have, you know, we haven't talked about Craig Knoll for the last hour, right. it seems like. 14 of 16, 207 yards and two touchdowns. That's two weeks back-to-back, -back, very efficient as a quarterback. But I want to go back to Barcelona real quickly. Sitting down, talking to them during the week, they were right. You could tell that they were flat. You could tell that they hadn't recovered from the loss last week. And they were right. We tried not to believe it, but they were absolutely right. They, meaning Barcelona, they were right about the, you know, how they felt about that game. They have not recovered from that loss.
524 left, fourth quarter. Scotland a 45 nothing lead. And another first down. The last week's game was a little bit different. You know, they got they got caught off guard. Barcelona, I should say, got caught off guard a little bit with the defense being on the field so long and wearing down so on and so forth. You can't make that statement this week. Yes, they've been on the field an awful long time, but a lot of that has been on their own doing. You know what I'm saying? They have been out there because they cannot get the Scotland offense off the of football field. Kicks out to the 24-yard line. Let's go back to talk about Ken Margram, the offensive coordinator. The man on the right there with the headset on. Margram was a wide receiver at Stanford University and a good one. He was an All-American. And the guy that recruited him and the guy that was his head coach for the first two years there was Bill Walsh. On that staff was also a few names you might recognize. George Seifert, Denny Green, Jim Fossil, and Marjoram, who played in the NFL for seven years. This is his first year as an offensive coordinator. Stafford's throw is dropped near midfield. Two nights ago, Marjoram spent a half an hour on the phone with Bill Walsh and, and Kenny told us yesterday that everything he does as a coordinator he learned from Walsh he scripts the play the way Bill Walsh has and uses uses the terminology that Walsh had in the uh, West Coast offense you know he seems to be a West Coast purist and he stays true to the form of what he learned from Walsh he's you know if you talk about the Denny Greens and the Mike Holmgren and the John Gruden's and all the guys that have come from that tree mm -hmm. um, he would be the low-hanging fruit at this point you know one of the young guys that's coming up but I'm telling you the talent here on the Scotland coordinating staff call it that you know you're not just talking about players this league is a developmental league for all walks of life if it's not broadcasters if it's not uh, equipment people uh, referees coaches coordinators it's a training ground for all of them so he's getting a good opportunity here and making the best of it Boy, has he ever. Kick is on the way. Kerwin Cook on the return. And Cook to the 30-yard line. And that's as far as he'll get. Headed to the final two weeks of the 2003 NFL Europe season. A race for the World Bowl yet to be decided. Won't be done until next week. Four teams still in contention for all the latest on World Bowl 11 at Hamden Park in Glasgow. June 14th, you can log on to worldbowl.com. And you might just find the Scottish Claymores there if they get some help next week. I don't think there's a doubt they're the they're the hottest team in the league right now. This would be their third straight win and their third straight impressive win. Well, they've got balance. They've always had Scotland has always had a good defense. A defense as they just cut a swarp right through them, but they've always had a good defense, a very aggressive defense that flies around and gets after uh, whoever has the ball. Now you combine that this year with a balanced offense, a passing game that's been very efficient, a running game that has been very capable, and this is a team that no one will want to see in the World War. There's Ray Woodard, one of the coordinators that you talked about. Chris Finland in at quarterback for Barcelona. Flags are down. Finland is brought down out of bounds. Jawan Cherry on the stop. And this one is coming back. Holy. Number 79, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. You know, Scotland, they're not very fancy on defense. They just work real hard. No real you know, big names there. Uh, the exception of Landry, who's a dominant player on the defensive line, there are no real big names there. But like I said, as a group, they get it done. And I think enough is not said about how they pursue. And this has always been a trade-up there defense even last year when they didn't have as good a record they get after people and it's always a physical football game no matter what the score is first down Finland screen pass should be wide open 
And Damian Hunter across the 45, another late flag. Roel Blendman made the stop. They're going to attack a little on for face man. The officials today graded as well as the players and the coaches. Personal foul. Face mask, number 21, defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. You see the dumb pass coming out here. It's actually wide open back to the left, but he cuts it back up the middle. And the safety runs in and just grabs a hold of the face mask. You know, and they still have the five-yard face mask and the 15-yard. Anytime you tug and pull down, you're going to get the 15-yard face mask. So the penalty brings it inside the 40. The only suspense here is will Barcelona get any points? As we're under three minutes, Finland in the pocket will tuck it and go to the 34-yard line. Raydell Lockhart, the defensive end for the Claymores. Three sacks today. He had three on the season. Well, what I like the best about uh, Lockhart that I've seen today is that not a lot of technique. A lot of that has to be taught. A lot of young pass rushers, they have not, they're not taught a lot of technique. But I tell you what I like is that he rushes the edge, comes off the ball, knows to come off the ball, knows to watch the ball, get off the ball quickly, and get to a corner. And believe me, that's one of the hardest things to convince young players of is just come off the ball and really good things will happen to you. Guys, sit down, paralysis by analysis, don't come off the ball. You can't win as a defensive lineman if you don't come off the ball. Lockhart and the rest of the Claymore's defense. Superb today. 45 nothing worth of superb today. Back to Barcelona after this. Gene Dahlquist and Scotland, a 45 nothing lead. Two minutes left in the ball game. Barcelona trying to avoid the shutout. And let's see if they can do it. Chris Finland on the draw play. To Damian Hunter. And he's down to the 27 yard line. Devontae thing, Peterson made the stop. A good thing about a coach like uh, Coach McNell, because he's been around for so long, you don't have to worry about him dilly dallying and, and calling unnecessary timeouts in a situation like this. You know, the guy has seen everything. And, uh, you know, the wor his worst nightmare has been realized. He said during the season that, during the week, I should say, that he did not want this team to limp into the World Bowl. He did not want the team to be going into the World Bowl not playing good football. And here's the reality of it. They're not playing very well just two weeks in a row. Weeks in a row. Last week may have been an aberration, but this now is showing you that they're just not playing good football right now. And next week, they've got to go on the road to Ryan, one of the league leaders. Sean Morey can't make the catch. It's fourth down. Hey, we'll make a play. You know, you know, that'll look like it's a drop in Morey's part. Right, right, Morey's part. Yes, he should have caught that football, right, but the ball had no business being where it was thrown. I mean, that should have been led to the outside to get him out of bounds to stop the clock. That ball shouldn't have been thrown where it was thrown. Morey should have caught the ball, though. So it's fourth and seven. Finland. Man open. It's caught. Oh, and Keith Parker will score. And it's party time in Barcelona. Fiesta. <laughs> They have the Barcelona Dragons theme song they play whenever the Dragons score. And for the first time all night, the fans get to hear it. Now we've got a ball game. <laughs> They're right back in it, Sean. 